NEC XM2960 is a mid to late 1990s era professional presentation video monitor produced by NEC or the Nippon Electric Company. NEC was originally founded in 1899, so it's a company with lots of history. If we look at NEC in the early 1980s, we'll see a growing company that has just gone public in many global market exchanges following the success of their semiconductor business. NEC dominated the personal computer industry in Japan with around 80% of the total market share at this time. NEC began to bring their PC products to new markets throughout the late 1980s, including European and American nations. At this time period, most personal computers were built all in one with the CRT monitor and PC built in together. But by the late 1980s, technology had progressed to the point where there was a need to separate the monitor from the PC, and NEC began producing standalone monitors. By the early 1990s, NEC was a large producer of CRT displays to accompany many of their personal computer lines. This brings us to the monitor series we are covering today. That, of course, being the NEC XM and XP series multi-format CRT monitors, this is easily one of the best CRT monitors NEC would ever make. Here's our first look at the massive NEC XM2960. Again, this CRT is just colossal. It's almost a two foot cubic shape and it weighs nearly 120 pounds. It has a 27 inch viewable display area and it is in of course the 4x3 format. Now the video resolution, it does change on this one based on the input that you are using. If we start with composite video, it's going to be listed at about 500 TV lines of resolution. And then if you move up to S video, you're going to get up into 600 TV lines of resolution. And ultimately, you could go to RGB support. And that has a maximum resolution of 1024 by 768. Now, this one does support a lot of video formats and resolutions, including NTSC, PAL, CCAM, and any RGB signal with a horizontal frequency range of 15.75 kilohertz up to 65 kilohertz for this model and if you have the xp model that will go all the way up to 95 kilohertz on the horizontal frequency range and then it needs to have a vertical frequency range of 40 to 120 hertz it has a universal power supply inside of it that does work from 100 volts AC all the way up to 240 volts AC. The monitor also has a very nice remote control that provides complete functionality in the palm of your hand. It even supports geometry adjustments, which is good because this monitor needs a lot of geometry adjustments. Now let's flip around and take a closer look at the back panel of the CRT, and then we'll look at the front panel too, and kind of go through a little bit more on what you can hook up into the monitor. Looking now at the back of this monitor, we're gonna first go over a lot of the inputs and what we've got going on here. This looks very standard to a lot of televisions from the late 90s would look, except for the fact that it's using primarily B and C inputs. You do have a lot of options for inputs here. First off, video one and video two are pretty much identical. They've got left and right audio in and audio out here. And then we've got B and C for input and output on uh, composite or regular analog video because of course you could be using a different format but if it goes in through that way then you can use this input or this input or you can use s video instead if you want to do uh, use s video and have a picture uh, quality increase then that would be the way to go if we go over here to our rgb inputs there's actually two on this monitor first we've got the rgb input one up here which that is actually this bottom input. This is the input, the larger. It's a 15 pin uh, proprietary adapter. So you can get a 15 pin cable if you find one that has this orientation 
you can use it with this monitor and make a custom cable because you could pretty much put any type of sink you want to on the cable and then input it through this input and then there's an output which is even it's still 15 pins but it's three rows of pins now instead of two like this bottom one and then you've got a sink uh, dip switch for either uh, not sink but whether you need 75 ohm termination or not if you do have this looped through you're going to have it on high but if you do not have it a loop through it and you need 75 ohm termination that's built in there's a selector switch there and then you've got your rgb audio down here now rgb2 input over on the bottom and right hand side this is going to be our more common input and the one that most people are going to want to use for rgb video uh, for things like retro consoles and, and things like that, the most common setup is going to be what I have here, where I have the input going in, I have red, green, and blue going in there, and then I've got my sync cable attached to the H, and then to get it to work with this one, I need to have the sync on high. If I have the sync on 75 ohms, it'll flicker and it won't sync up properly, but if I have the sync on high, it will work, and then I need to have my uh, RGB colors terminated to 75 ohms, and then that will work perfectly. And then if I wanted to daisy chain out, I could daisy chain out of this. But this sync separation here just gives us the capability to input different types of sync if you had Extron devices or other things that had sync separated between horizontal and vertical sync. You can easily input that in this monitor. And then we've got our remote PC ex external controls, which you can use a universal controller that would have been manufactured by another company or even NEC probably had a version two where you could plug in this and control it from there and that's part of this remote plugs here kind of similar to the Sony style and then we've got a dip switch and then the dip switch has a guide up here that tells you what the dip switch actually does so it, it you want to have at least normal sync selected up so that's number two on the dip switch and then wireless remote you want to have that turned on number seven and that way you can use your wireless remote and your normal sync. If you wanted to do sync on green, you can actually switch that up here by switching this dip switch. And then if you wanted to have it in a power management mode, which I don't know that we'll be worried about, it's number four. And then uh, one thing to note, if you do put it on number six, if that's turned on, and even if number eight is turned on, then that could limit even the ability to turn the monitor on. Check that these dip switches are selected at least the way they are set here so that uh, initially when you turn it on, it'll work if it's supposed to work. The last thing I want to mention on this is this cutout right here. There is a giant noisy, noisy fan in this. You might have even heard the fan in the audio background from the opening segment. I had to turn the monitor off just to shoot what, I'm, what you're seeing now because this fan is so noisy. It's got to be changed. It's one of the noisiest fans uh, that I've dealt with in a long time, even on a CRT. Very noisy, very annoying. Uh, hopefully it's just something simple on like 5 or 12 volt DC power rail so we can change it for something else. But that's, that's not a good solution as is. Now let's turn around and take a closer look at the front side of the monitor and we'll go through some of the buttons. And once you've got your power plugged in, you can push this button to turn the power on and you'll get a standby light that will eventually go green. And then this is simply how you go through and change first through your input. So there's your RGB1, RGB2, video1, video2. And you can press this to proceed down here into the menu and then you get to use uh, the on-screen menu will come up and then you can use these buttons to cycle through the menu and make adjustments similarly to a television or something, a, a computer monitor from this era. Again, I said that they did have a very nice remote control for this monitor, and here that is. And this would be the preferred way, if possible, you want to get this remote. That way you could do even more than what's available on the front of the monitor. You've even got a degaussing button, power on and off input selector and then this is our proceed menu setup and we could get in here and easily easily adjust things like our width height 
even our side pin cushion, uh, normal motor, over scan, under scan, brightness, contrast controls, and then volume controls. So a very nice monitor. There's the model number on it. So ultimately, our goal is to get this monitor looking spick and span as far as cosmetically and internally on performance. Like I said, one of the biggest things we need to do is figure out a good fan option because it is just too noisy. It almost gives me a headache sitting right next to it. So that'll be one of the first things. However, I want to show you some things on geometry that we will want to take a look at through the 240p test suite. And if you want to know more about this software, I will have a link below. But this is uh, a great software that we use to calibrate our CRTs for geometry and many other things. It's got a lot of great test patterns, but you could see some of the uh, abnormalities we might have where we might need to fix our yoke a little bit and some curved screen action on that pattern. And then if we look at our linearity, you can notice some things, just minor tweaking adjustment. We do have some convergence that's really separated in this corner and up here. So maybe some additional strips can help out with that. But all in all, it looks pretty good. So what we want to do is I, I know it's going to be dirty inside there too. I've just got a feeling. And then we will uh, we'll open it up. In the following videos, we will take a look at all the circuit boards and then we'll clean those and we'll see how far the owner wants to go because if he wants to go all the way, we may be able to replace a lot of the components internally and then see uh, what kind of improvements we can make on the screen adjustments and we'll take a long look afterwards and we'll see uh, what different consoles and, and other devices that we can put into this monitor to really check it out and see what it's fully capable of and uh, see how maybe you can make the best of it if you're lucky enough to come across one of these because honestly, even in the now four or five years of CRT, serious CRT working that I've been doing, this is one of the first opportunities I've had to even work on one of these large NEC monitors, much less find one that's even for sale in my area. But hey, just look for those videos and we'll see you next time with some more retro content. Brutus, it's time to wake up. Hey, that's right. You ready to go work on a CRT? Oh yeah? Well hey, before that, let's just, let's take a look at some of NEC's early products, including some of their original CRTs. Yeah. Tell everybody you're okay. Yeah. <laughs>